Um, it has been said time and time again that the Christian life is lived between the now and the not yet. We're Saturday people uh, living between the, the events of Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday, the tomb and new life. Uh, in Revelation 21, 4, we read, He will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. These things will be gone forever. And that, that's the not yet. We're, we're not there yet, but one day we will be. It is coming, but it hasn't come yet. And Christians have reacted in, to the coronavirus in a variety of ways. Some have focused on the, the now. Uh, you know, they're fearing the worst. We, we do live in a world of crying, of bitterness, of misery, of plague and pestilence and death. This is the, the nature of the now, of this life. Healing is for the life that is come when we're given new bodies that will last forever. But others are focused on the not yet aspect and brought it in, trying to bring it into the present. They expect, perhaps even demand, supernatural protection and healing in this present life. And Often the danger is that you therefore fall into the sin of presumption and expect that God is going to act in certain ways when he might not. And presumption is hope distorted to excess. Um, in the USA, 10% of churches are reported to have refused to close their doors against government advice and then cry persecution when their pastors and leaders are arrested for disobeying the law. In one uh, Illinois Pentecostal church they carried on with their Sunday service against the government's advice and at least 43 congregants then fell ill with coronavirus following the service. It's not of a lack of faith to close our doors when we did so earlier in the year and just protect the weakest among us. It, it's an act of love. Faith is not a substance that can be measured but it's a life lived in love. Faith is faithfulness, it's believing loyalty to our King, Jesus. Theologian Matthew Bates in his book Salvation by Allegiance Alone makes the point that the Greek word faith is best translated into English really as allegiance. Galatians 5.6, Paul says, For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, it's no benefit in being circumcised or uncircumcised. What's important is faith expressing itself in love. So faith needs to be expressed in love. In the New Testament, we mean it, um, Trophimus, one of the eight friends in Acts 20 verse 4, who, who accompanied Paul on some of his missionary journeys. And yet in 2 Peter 4.20, Paul writes, uh, Erastus stayed in Corinth and I left Trophimus Trop sick at Miletus. So Paul's Christian friend, his co-worker in the gospel, he's one of these eight friends who, who accompanied Paul on his missionary journeys, became sick and Paul had to leave him behind. In Galatians 4 verse 15, Paul speaks of his own ill health when he talks about an eye infection that he's suffering. And he says, even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. If you would have done so, you would have torn out your own eyes and given them to me. So friends, we're like Paul um, and Trophimus here. We, we must not assume our own invulnerability. As Christ tells us in Matthew 5, um, 10, 16, be as shrewd as snakes and as harmless as doves. We're, we're caught in between the now and the not yet. Sometimes God, God does bring healing. Sometimes the not yet invades the now and does bring healing, does bring miraculous things. Um, sometimes God does bring about that supernatural protection so that no one is sick or, or is harmed in a specific situ situation. But we must not presume so. Let us live our lives as harmless doves and live a life of love for the sake of the other.